Hello and welcome back to Luxury Dated. Dated. Now today, as you can probably see from the screen in front of you, we're going to look at Star Race, which is done by a company called Denton Designs. Now this was, uh, it was actually a favourite of mine um, back in my Commodore 64 days, and I remembered it very, very well as being a lovely uh, wipeout style game. Um, 3D racer, um, well ahead of its time. So uh, it's kind of an interesting one. It's not actually a published game. Um, it was a freebie with uh, Zap64, which is a great Commodore 64 Mac. Uh, Zap64, the uh, September 1990 edition, by the way, in case you're looking at it. Uh, added, uh, got a copy of it myself, which is great. Uh, there was a great thing about Paradroid 90, as you can probably read from the screen. And it included a lovely free tape, which had some great games on it, including uh, Star Wars Now. This is, if you look Star Race up online, you'll find this by Mastertronic. It's not it. It is, this is not the Star Race we're going to review today. No, it's not. We're going to look at uh, Denton Designs one, which is a completely different game. So, uh, firing up the old Commodore 64. We'll load it up, and first thing you're going to notice is it's brilliant presentation. Uh, well, not the Commodore 64. There we go. You're going to see, it looks, yeah, there you go. Lovely, bear in mind the Commodore 8-bit uh, machine, uh, this looked absolutely fantastic at the time. Kind of a little bit reminiscent of the, uh, if you've ever seen the Captain Blood games, um, but little CD style uh, control there, little hi-fi kind of control. Um, there was about 13 or 14 tracks on this if I remember rightly. Um, no, you can't, you can't move them around, it's not that, that advanced. I uh, thought you might, but no, definitely can't. Um, Go. Oh, and there's actually good uh, descriptions. There's some lovely descriptions on it as well. If we get down to data here, ah, the spaghetti strangler. Obviously, someone spent a bit of time doing these, coming up with the various comments. Now, yeah, I love this one. Uh, Twenty points of Boddington's. Now, the um, the control type didn't really ever seem to have very much, uh, I, I never really found it did very much for the, uh, it's not like the old wipeout kind of controls where the computer will help you break and things like that. It didn't seem to make too much of a dis difference. Now also, bear in mind, I haven't played this game in about 15 or 16 years, so I'm curious to see if it lives up to my um, expectations. But I do remember, like I said, playing this a lot. Okay, so it's a... Uh, Stop messing about here, I think, and we'll see if we can pick a track. There, yeah, track six. Okay, so lovely kind of 3D effect. Uh, ah, here we go. So it's if you've ever played the Commodore 64 version of Aliens, uh, which is the UK one, not the American one, um, you'll have seen the dropship had a kind of similar enough idea. You have to stay within the um, sorry, the, the dropship section where you have to land on the planet. Stay within the lines basically, and uh, if you move to far, oh, no, hit a hit one of the uh, the other ships there. So you have to stay basically within the the track, uh, or if you don't, you immediately start to slow down. If you hit anything, um, you're basically dead. <laughs> so okay, computer is over. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it's basically uh, flight simulator style controls. So pull back to uh, put your nose in the air, push down to put the nose down, and left and right steer, left and right. First impressions are it is treacle slow. Uh, it's not aged well. Um, I remember this as being blazingly fast, and it's not. It's treacle slow, and it's just very, very hard to control. You're pulling back, and there's almost a lag. You know, the sound is terrible. By the way, I've actually muted it, um, just because it's it's really just a kind of uh, kind of crappy engine noise, and uh, some things kind of just beeping around. But it is very, very, very slow here. So what I'm going to do with the Wonders of Emulation in a second is crank the speed up a bit because it, just to see if it plays any better. Um, like I said, in my memory, this had been a sort of uh, precursor to Wipeout, and looking at it here, it's it's not. I'm beginning to see why it was never actually officially published. The way it was kind of just given to a magazine as a freebie. And um, the present, oh, bit of a little bit of noise there. The presentation is fantastic. Okay, I'm going to crank the speed up by the way, so we'll see how this goes. Oh, ah, yeah. <laughs> okay, bit harder to control. Um, no, and we're off, and we're back up. Now, obviously, with the speed up, it's a bit more playable, but it's actually a lot harder to control it now. Um, the trick seems to be just, you know, uh, leave the track for a second or two, uh, get over the guys, and go back in again. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, I can kind of, uh, in the cold light of day, I can see why this is a, 
why it was never published. It, it looks fantastic, uh, but it just is completely unplayable. Um, there's a shell of a good game here. It's important, you know. Every, all the trappings of the game are fantastic. The, uh, the presentation's brilliant. The uh, the music is pretty good, um, and the wireframe graphics are, are great for the time. But there's just no game here, um, and it's a real. And it's again, it's beyond the limitations of the machine. This is it. Um, I hit the hit a ball there. This is kind of running well beyond what a Commodore 64 would have been able to do, uh, and it's just a bit playable. The Commodore 64 could shift, you know. Um, wireframe graphics around uh, and even filled in. I mean, Stunt Car Racer is a great example of that. Um, you know, but just this is uh, it's it's kind of beyond it. I'd love to see what this runs like on something like the Atari 8 bits that could do some good 3D stuff. But uh, there you go. But that that's it. Um, 14th Star Race. Uh, not the amazing jewel of a game I remember from my uh, youth. Still though, for something that came free with a magazine. Um, well, the music was good, I guess. <laughs> Uh, that was one probably best left in the past. Uh, that's been Luxuries Outdated. Um, see you later.